The Reverend Arthur Maydew worked very hard in a large parish for eleven months of the year. He was also a student and a man of no strong physique, so that when an opportunity was presented to him to take a holiday by exchanging his parsonage in a sprawling, dark, industrial town with the country living of another clergyman in the sunlit south, he was very glad to avail himself of it. Arthur Maydew had two daughters, the heroines of this story set in an English county shortly after the First World War. Both these girls rejoiced at the prospect of a period of quiet and rest in the pleasant country neighbourhood of Overbury. But their dreams were shattered. From the gentle green acres, the Maydew sisters passed into the dark regions of terror that lie beyond midnight. Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder presents Beyond Midnight. Quite, quite lovely. Oh, Maggie, we shall persuade old Mr. Roberts to exchange Overbury for Father's Parish permanently. Oh, as if he would. This lovely place, these surroundings for Sheffield. Oh, Alice, who in all the world would make such a bargain? Look, that was a song thrush. Did you see him? No. With eyes like yours, I'm surprised you did. <laughs> well, I will not wear spectacles. And if it contents me to say I saw a song thrush... Then a song thrush I saw. Oh. <laughs> Do you think Father is contented here, Maggie? Of course. He has Mr. Roberts' library. What could content him more? Books, books, and more books. A hundred thousand books. <laughs> oh, how green it is up here. That's Bricket Bottom down there. The Glen. How long do you think it is? One mile. Oh, three quarters, perhaps. You must ask Smith. He knows all the county's history. Oh, I would not dream of asking Smith anything. He's quite stupid. Look, you see, that's the road which leads to Blaze's farm. Oh. Oh, I wish there were a few friendly neighbours, that's all. Then it would be paradise here. That's the only trouble. Once we've fully explored, what shall we do then? On this side of Bricket Bottom, there's nothing but Carew Court. And that's miles and miles and miles away. I wonder what he's like. Who? The owner, Lord Carew, of course. They say he's one of the wealthiest men in England. <laughs> I've heard tell that he doesn't have a handsome 25-year-old son, Maggie. Only a rather plain daughter. I was thinking nothing of the sort. I merely wondered what he was like. It is bleak, though, isn't it? All about here. Beautiful, yes, but bleak. Oh, come on. It's getting dark. We must... Tomorrow we'll explore right to Blaze's farm. Who knows? We may be treated to fresh, warm, creamy milk. Alice, look. Hmm? Look. How very curious. There's a house down there in the bottom, which we have never... Oh, leastways, I have never noticed before. House? Well, do you see? We've walked along the path down there, but I... No, no. There, girl, there. You see? I don't see any house. Oh, you must be able to see it. A quaint-looking old-fashioned house. Red brick. Oh, just where the road bends to the right. See the garden? No. I certainly can't see a house. Oh, Alice, I am very sorry, but if you don't persuade Father to buy spectacles for you soon, you'll be incapable of seeing anything. Yes, yes, perhaps I can see a house, but, but the light is getting so bad. Oh, Maggie, we really must fly. All right, but tomorrow we shall come and explore it. Perhaps we shall meet some charming people, make new friends. Wait for me. Perhaps we may persuade Father to desert his books and come with us, too. We must meet the people in the hospital, otherwise Father will be too shy. We can't go tomorrow, Maggie. <laughs>
in heaven's name, Alice. Oh, my ankle. Oh, oh Maggie, help me. Well, why did you come down the stairs like an elephant? It's your own fault. Oh, you told me to hurry. Oh, here, don't stand. Sit down, rest it. Oh. Well, I wanted to go to the house. Father's forgotten all about visiting Overbury. We can go this morning. Oh, it's swelling. Oh, look. Oh, Maggie, it's so painful. Oh. Oh, I shan't leave the house this morning, that's evident. If you wish to explore, you must go alone. Yes, Maggie. Yes, Father. If we don't go now, we'll never get away. He's sure to want to go to Overbury. It's no good. I cannot stand. Oh, go alone. And tell me about it when you come back. If there is a house in Bricket Bottom. I swear I saw not. I shall see you soon. If they are pleasant people and we are invited to tea and your ankle still pains you tomorrow, we shall take the trap over. Maggie, you are so forward. Maggie, are you there? Now don't try to walk. Preserve your ankle at all costs. I shall not be late. Tell Father I am just walking. He will be cross if he thinks I have gone to the house. Very old-fashioned, but oh, absolutely charming. Oh, and Alice, you should just see the garden. Oh, there are hollyhocks and roses and Canterbury bells and foxgloves. It is absolutely lovely. A darling little house. It's set close to the woods, just where the lane turns off to Blazes Farm. Oh, and Alice, I saw the people too. An old lady and gentleman. The gentleman was sitting on the porch. I couldn't see him clearly. But the lady was in the garden tying up her flowers or, or weeding or something or the other. <laughs> oh, she looked up and, and smiled as I went by. Oh, Alice, I'm sure they are nice people. It would be awfully pleasant to make their acquaintance. And we shall too. I shall make their acquaintance if it is the last thing I do. Hello. Hello. You're walking. The ankle is fully healed. I hobble. <laughs> What's the matter? Matter? Yes, you don't look yourself this morning. Father was not angry yesterday, was he? I'm sure he was not awfully keen on going into Overbury. No, no. Not angry. No, I'm all right. Only I did not sleep very well. I kept on dreaming about the house. It was such an odd dream, too. The house seemed to be home, and yet to be different. What? That house in Bricket Bottom? What on earth is the matter with you? You seem perfectly obsessed with the place. Hmm? Well, it is curious, isn't it? I mean, that we should only just have discovered it, and it looks to be lived in by nice people. I do wish we could get to know them. Mm, it's going to be a storm. Oh, the swelling just will not go down. I went to the house. House? Oh, the house in Bricket Bottom. Well, I saw the old lady, and she is absolutely a darling. I believe she simply lives in that garden. Mind you, it's absolutely enchanting. Oh, anyway, she came to her gate and talked with me, and she asked me to look at her flowers. She's terribly keen on flowers. Anyway, the thing is, oh, I was a little shy, I suppose, and she said, you needn't be afraid of me, my dear. I like to see young ladies about me, and my husband finds their society quite necessary to him. Oh, she's awfully attractive. Lovely silver hair. Anyway, she told me about herself and the colonel. Oh, that's her husband. He used to be in India, in the army. Paxton's their name. Colonel and Mrs. Paxton. She said they were awfully lonely at times, and she asked me to meet the colonel. I hope you didn't go in. Why not? Well, I, 
I don't like her asking you in that way. Well, I didn't actually go in because it was getting late, but... But what? I have accepted Mrs. Paxton's invitation to pay her a little visit tomorrow. Well, I do think you ought to find out a little more about them before you go calling, Maggie. Why? Oh, what on earth is the matter? They're lovely people. How do you know? Well, I'll tell you when I come home. Oh, you would have to go and hurt your ankle. Look, I'll go this afternoon just for a short visit. I'll be back for tea, and then we can have some croquet. You know how happy father is when he plays croquet. Oh, Alice, don't look so disapproving. Maybe the colonel and his lady have a handsome son. After all, you're getting awfully old, Alice. Twenty. Where is Maggie? Father? Where is Maggie? Out for a walk. And she's gone to pay a call on some neighbours whom she has recently discovered. Neighbours? What neighbours? Mr. Roberts never spoke of any neighbours to me. Well, I don't know much about them. Maggie and I were out walking the other day, the day before I hurt my ankle, and we saw, at least she saw, a house in Brickett Bottom. Honestly, Father, I am so blind, I what can't... What house? Hmm? It belongs to Colonel and Mrs. Paxton, in Brickett Bottom. A little red brick house. Maggie has made the acquaintance of the Paxtons. It's perfectly all right. He's a retired Indian Army officer. Maggie went along this afternoon, but she said she'd be back long before this. Hmm. I am not too well pleased about this, Alice. Maggie should not be so impulsive and scrape acquaintance with unknown people. She said she'd be home early. Well, yes. Had there been nice neighbours at Brickett Bottom, I'm sure Mr. Roberts would have told us. It's getting late. It can have delayed her. You say she saw the house. You didn't. It was getting dark. You know how short-sighted I am. But surely you must have seen it at some other time. Well, that is the strangest part of the whole affair, Father. We have often walked along there, but neither of us have ever seen the house till that evening. And as I said, it was getting dark. Father, perhaps we should ask Smith to harness the pony and bring Maggie back. I am not happy about her. I'm rather afraid, I must confess. I, I don't know why. Afraid of what? What could have gone wrong in a quiet place like this? Still, I, I'll send Smith over for her. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Smith! If you feel you can manage with that ankle of yours, perhaps you'll come too. Your poor dear departed mother always swore she would have preferred sons. Less trouble. Oh, not that she wasn't terribly fond of her two daughters, of course, bless her soul, but... Ah, Smith, I want you to harness a pony at once and go over to Colonel Paxton's house in Brickett Bottom and bring Miss Maydew home. Well, what are you waiting for, man? Go where, sir? To Colonel Paxton's house. Bring Miss Maggie home. I never heard of Colonel Paxton, sir. I don't know what else you mean. Alice, tell this fellow where your sister has gone to, and let us be off to fetch her. The Paxton's house man in Brickett Bottom, Colonel Paxton. Smith, you must know the house. You really must. Why, we saw it only the other day. At least Maggie saw it. I... Not too heavily on that ankle now, girl. Harness the pony at once. Yes, sir. Stupid man. Alice, is your ankle strong enough? Yes, father. Then you must show Smith where this house is. I, uh, I must own I'm worried, Alice. But why, father? Maggie merely went to pay a visit to the colonel and his wife. And why have I not heard of the colonel? Roberts would have informed me if there had been pleasant neighbours hereabouts. Ah, be that as it may. Come, let me help you. I shall find it difficult not to be stern with your sister when we meet her again. The place depresses me, Alice, that I must own. It depresses me. The country all around is beautiful, but I am not fond of this part. Well, where is the house? At, at the bend of the road. It, it should be there. Coming dark. 
yet you remember no house. Smith, how long have you worked hereabouts? No, on five and twenty years, sir. <clears throat> I shall be fierce with her, I promise you. Here we are. Smith, it, it's here. Just... This is the place? It, yes, Father. But there's no house here. Sir? Huh? Look, sir. What? Some part of a building. Here and and here in the grass. Uh, there, there was a dwelling here at one time, a long time ago. There were terraces here running... Uh, what does it all mean, Alice? Are you sure of yourself, girl? You're not mistaken? Perhaps further... No, father. I promise. It stood here, the house. Maggie pointed it out to me from... from up above. And she went to visit the Paxtons. Well, then where is Maggie? Uh, <gasps> Listen. Uh, Smith, Maggie! Where, Maggie, where are you? That was Maggie's voice. Father! She's near and in some trouble. Where, where did it come from, Smith? Oh, I didn't hear anybody calling, sir. Alice, go back to the trap. Let me help you. Uh, Smith, we must search. Miss Maggie? Miss Maggie? Where are you? Maggie? Miss Maggie? Maggie, Maggie we are. heard you. Call again. Where are you? Alice, drive on to Blaze's farm, bring help, ask Mr. Rumbold to come and his sons too if they're at home, and ask them to fetch lanterns. Father, she might have returned over the downs while we were going by road. Perhaps she saw us and called out. Drive to Blaze's farm, girl. Maggie! 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 I offer you more tea, Mr. Roberts? Mm, uh, no, thank you, my child. <clears throat> no, thank you. Nothing. Four days. Nothing. Where? What can have happened to her, Roberts? The police have questioned the old woman. She saw her on the path to Brickett Bottom, but no one else has seen her since. She, the old woman, said... What was it, Father? She described Maggie as smiling, but looking queer-like. The house. There is no house. And yet... <sighs> Have you ever heard any local gossip concerning this Colonel and Mrs. Paxter? No. I never heard mention of their names until... I think the pup needs more hot water, Father. Well, I'll tell you all I can about them, which is not very much, I fear. I am now nearly 75 years old, and for nearly 70 years no house has stood in Brickett Bottom. But when I was a very young child, there was an old-fashioned red brick house standing in a garden at the bend of the road, such as you have described. It was owned and lived in by a retired Indian soldier and his wife, a colonel and Mrs. Paxton. At the time I speak of, certain events having taken place at the house, and the old couple having died, it was sold by their heirs to Lord Carew, who shortly after pulled it down on the ground that it interfered with his shooting. The Paxtons were well known to my father, who was the clergyman here before me, and to the neighbourhood in general. They lived quietly and were not unpopular, but the colonel was supposed to possess a violent and vindictive temper. Their family consisted only of themselves and their daughter, the colonel's old army servant and his Eurasian wife. Well, I cannot tell you the details of what happened. I was only a child. My father never liked gossip, 
and in later years, when he talked to me on the subject, he always avoided any appearance of exaggeration or sensationalism. However, it is known that Miss Paxton fell in love and became engaged to a young man to whom her parents took a strong dislike. They used every possible means to break off the match, and many rumours were set on foot as to their conduct. Undue influence, even cruelty, were charged against them. I do not know the truth. All I can say is that Miss Paxton died, and a very bitter feeling against her parents sprang up. Yes, but Roberts, I pray you, what... Uh, please let me continue. I know how shocked you are. Uh, this story, well, it may shed some light. I... <coughs> My father never saw Paxton after his daughter's death and only saw Mrs. Paxton once or twice. He described her as an utterly broken woman and no one seemed at all surprised when she followed her daughter to the grave within three months. Paxton himself became a recluse. He was rarely if ever seen and himself died in a very short time. Some said by his own hand. He was buried like his wife and daughter in the churchyard of my church. <coughs> the property passed to a distant relative who came down to it for one night soon afterwards. He never came again. It said he conceived a violent dislike to the place. He sold it to Lord Carew, who later pulled it down, and the garden was left to relapse into a wilderness. Those are the facts. But there, there is something more. I, I can see it in your face. You have a right to know. What I'm going to tell you now is rumour, vague and uncertain. About five years after the house had been pulled down, a young maid servant at Carew Court was out walking one afternoon. She was a newcomer to the district. On returning home to tea, she told her fellow servants that as she walked down Brickett Bottom, which place she described clearly, she passed a red brick house at the bend of the road, and that a kind-faced old lady had asked her to step in for a while. And she is absolutely a star. She came to her gate and talked with me and asked me in to look at her flowers. She's awfully attractive. Lovely silver hair. Did this girl go in? No. She feared that she might be late back at the hall for tea. She never visited the bottom again. But two or three years after that, after my father's death, a travelling tinker and his wife and daughter camped for a night at the foot of the bottom. The girl strolled away up the glen to gather blackberries, and she was never seen nor heard of again. Of course, one does not know the truth, and she may have run away voluntarily from her parents, although there was no known cause for her doing that. That is all I can tell you of either facts or rumours. All that I can do now is to pray for you. And for her. Beyond Midnight is presented every Friday night at half past nine by Biotex, the new soak and pre wash powder. The program is adapted for broadcasting and produced by Michael McCabe.